In the realm of archaeology and Egyptology, one name has resonated loudly for decades, Zahi Hawass. A figure of immense influence and controversy, his work in unraveling the mysteries of ancient Egypt has both captivated and divided scholars and enthusiasts alike. But behind the grandeur of monumental discoveries lies a tapestry of debates and disputes, a landscape where truth and contention often intersect. In this gripping video, we embark on a journey to peel back the layers, to scrutinize the claims and controversies that have surrounded Zahi Hawass throughout his career. On number 5, we have Tutankhamun's Beard Incident. The Tutankhamun's Beard Incident, which transpired in 2014, brought to light a contentious situation involving Zahi Hawass, an Egyptian archaeologist. This incident centers around the burial mask of King Tutankhamun, an artifact of immense historical significance. Initially, Hawass vehemently denied any culpability, contending that the damage to the mask's beard had occurred prior to his tenure. Nonetheless, as the scrutiny and inquiries intensified, it became evident that there were discrepancies in his account. As investigations delved deeper, it became apparent that the beard had, indeed, suffered damage and been subsequently reattached using epoxy during a restoration endeavor supervised by the museum's staff under Hawass's oversight. This revelation prompted discussions regarding the proper protocols and procedures for restoring and preserving invaluable relics. Additionally, the incident raised questions about transparency, responsibility, and accountability in the realm of archaeological conservation. On number four, we have the search for Nefertiti's tomb. The search for Nefertiti's tomb constitutes a notable episode in the career of Zahi Hawass, the Egyptian archaeologist. This particular narrative revolves around his assertion in 2009 that he had made a significant breakthrough by identifying the potential location of Queen Nefertiti's tomb, an endeavor that captured the attention of the global archaeological community and the general public alike. Hoas declared that he had pinpointed the tomb within the well-known Valley of the Kings, a site renowned for its historical significance and containing the tombs of numerous pharaohs and dignitaries from ancient Egypt. However, his proclamation was met with skepticism from fellow experts in the field, who raised valid concerns about the lack of compelling evidence to support his claim. Connectively, Hawass did not offer substantial proof to validate his assertion, which consequently sparked debates about the methodological rigor and transparency required in archaeological research and discoveries of this magnitude. The absence of concrete evidence ignited discussions among scholars about the importance of adhering to established academic standards when making substantial claims, particularly concerning historically significant figures like Queen Nefertiti. On number three, we have allegations of self-promotion. Allegations of self-promotion have been a recurrent topic in discussions surrounding Zahi Hawass, the prominent Egyptian archaeologist. This facet of his career involves claims that he utilized his high-profile position within Egypt's archaeological landscape to advance his personal image and prominence, often at the expense of broader academic and archaeological considerations. Hoas garnered a reputation for his frequent appearances in the media, including documentaries, television shows, and interviews. While public outreach and education are important aspects of archaeology, Critics argue that Hawass's media presence sometimes seemed to overshadow the collective efforts of the broader archaeological community. These critics contend that his emphasis on self-promotion sometimes eclipsed the collaborative nature of archaeological research and undermined the recognition due to other scholars and experts who contributed to significant discoveries. Furthermore, the allegations of self-promotion led to questions about the authenticity of his intentions. Critics raised concerns that his public-facing endeavors, including his distinctive personal style and recognizable attire, could potentially detract from the serious and scholarly nature of archaeological research. In response to these allegations, supporters of Hawass argue that his media engagements were instrumental in generating global interest in Egypt's rich archaeological heritage. On number two, we have handling of archaeological discoveries. Zahi Hawass's approach to the handling of archaeological discoveries has been a subject of scrutiny and debate within the archaeological community. This facet of his career encompasses his methods and practices in managing and sharing information about significant findings from Egypt's rich historical past. 
Critics have argued that Hoas sometimes exhibited a tendency to centralize control over archaeological discoveries and their dissemination. This approach was perceived as limiting the involvement of a broader array of scholars and experts in the process. Some archaeologists felt that this exclusivity could hinder the collaborative nature of archaeological research and restrict the free flow of information that is essential for advancing knowledge in the field. Another point of contention was the level of transparency exhibited in the reporting of discoveries. Critics pointed to instances where Hoas was accused of withholding or delaying the release of information about significant findings. This lack of timely and comprehensive reporting raised concerns about the transparency and openness required in archaeological research, especially when it comes to sharing findings with the wider academic community and the public. Furthermore, the issue of repatriation of artifacts also ties into the handling of archaeological discoveries. Hawass was known for advocating the return of Egyptian artifacts housed in foreign museums, even if they were acquired legally. While the goal of repatriation is to reclaim and preserve a nation's cultural heritage, critics argued that this approach might disregard the complexities of cultural exchange and the potential for museums to act as global educational resources. On number one, we have nationalist and controversial statements. Nationalist and controversial statements attributed to Zahi Hawass have sparked significant debate within the archaeological and cultural heritage communities. At the heart of these statements is Hawass's passionate advocacy for the repatriation of Egyptian artifacts from foreign museums, regardless of how they were acquired. He contends that these artifacts are an essential part of Egypt's cultural heritage and should rightfully return to their country of origin. This viewpoint resonates with those who believe that artifacts belong to the people and culture from which they originate. Hawass's fervent nationalism is rooted in the desire to reclaim Egypt's history and counter the colonial legacy of artifact acquisition. By championing repatriation, he seeks to rectify what he perceives as historical injustices and ensure that the artifacts are cared for within their cultural context. However, these nationalist statements have also raised complex ethical and practical questions. Many artifacts were legally acquired by foreign museums and have been part of their collections for decades, sometimes even centuries. Repatriation could potentially limit accessibility for international audiences and researchers, hindering the sharing of global cultural heritage. Moreover, the process of repatriation involves navigating intricate legal and diplomatic frameworks, which can lead to protracted negotiations and strained international relations. Hawass's controversial statements extend beyond repatriation to assertions about Egypt's cultural history and heritage. Some claims, such as his assertion that Queen Nefertiti was King Tutankhamun's mother, have garnered skepticism from experts. Zahi Hawass, a prominent figure in the field of Egyptology, has dedicated his life to unraveling the mysteries of ancient Egypt's rich history and cultural heritage. However, his career has not been without its share of controversies and debates. While he has been a key advocate for the preservation and study of Egypt's archaeological treasures, there are those who have raised questions and concerns about his actions, decisions, and management of Egypt's antiquities. In this exploration, we delve into the intriguing question. What is Zahi Hawass hiding from us about ancient Egypt? This inquiry delves into the various allegations, controversies, and criticism surrounding his career and leadership within the world of Egyptology. On number six, we have repatriation of artifacts. The dispute surrounding artifact repatriation has been a prominent feature of Zahi Hawass's career in Egyptology. The demand for the repatriation of Egyptian cultural objects taken from Egypt over different historical eras, such as colonialism and archaeological expeditions, lies at the heart of this complicated subject. According to critics, these items are often stolen without adequate authorization or documentation, and their removal is a kind of cultural appropriation and colonialism. During his stint as Egypt's antiquities minister, Hawass was a key figure in these repatriation attempts. Nonetheless, this is a complicated legal, ethical, and diplomatic matter. Many museums and organizations across the globe contain Egyptian items in their collections that have been there for decades, if not centuries. 
Repatriation supporters say that these items are part of Egypt's cultural legacy and should be returned to Egypt as a matter of justice and respect for national sovereignty. Opponents sometimes argue that the items were obtained legally at the time of their removal and that their continuous presence in museums across the globe provides for greater accessibility, study, and preservation. Furthermore, others feel that attempts at repatriation should be governed by mutually agreed upon international agreements and ethical standards. On number five, we have King Tutankhamun's touring exhibitions. The issue of King Tutankhamun's traveling displays has been a topic of contention throughout Zahi Hawass's career. These exhibits feature the presentation of objects from King Tutankhamun's tomb in museums and locations across the globe, with the goal of bringing ancient Egyptian history to a worldwide audience. The management and consequences of these shows, however, have prompted a number of issues and discussions. One critical problem is the preservation and protection of these rare items throughout their lengthy journey. Critics claim that shipping such fragile and old antiques exposes them to hazards such as destruction or theft. Some have questioned whether the advantages of displaying these treasures to foreign audiences exceed the hazards to their long-term preservation. Furthermore, financial elements of these shows have been discussed. Some opponents have highlighted concerns regarding the admission costs for these shows and how the cash produced by them is used. They are concerned about whether the financial profits will contribute adequately to the conservation and safeguarding of Egypt's greater cultural legacy. On number four, we have allegations of self-promotion. Allegations of self-promotion have placed a pall on Zahi Hawass's Egyptology career. This complicated problem reveals that Hawass has been accused of participating in actions and conduct intended at developing his own brand and popularity, sometimes at the cost of scientific and academic objectives, throughout his professional career. Critics contend that Hawass has done an excellent job of establishing himself in the public eye, typically via media appearances, films, and book release. They argue that, in addition to advancing Egyptology as a whole, his efforts have improved his own position as a charming and media-savvy celebrity. Some have questioned if Hawass' motives were solely scholarly and scientific, or whether he desired personal recognition. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, recognize his substantial contributions to Egyptology and say that his media presence has played a critical role in spreading awareness of Egypt's cultural legacy. They say that his public appearances have increased public interest in and support for Egyptian archaeological projects, which is critical for the preservation and research of ancient sites. On number three, we have handling of archaeological sites. In Zahi Hawass's career, the treatment of archaeological sites has been a source of worry and controversy, raising questions and worries about the protection, management, and excavation of Egypt's rich historical legacy. This multidimensional subject centers around the management of archaeological sites and the myriad issues related with their upkeep and investigation. During Hawass's term as Egypt's Antiquities Minister, critics questioned the efficacy of site management. They claim that certain archaeological sites were not effectively safeguarded, resulting in difficulties like looting, unlawful excavations, and structural deterioration. These issues highlight the vital necessity for thorough site security and protection in order to avoid illegal artifact trading and the destruction of historic buildings. There have also been disagreements concerning the methodology and procedures used in Hawass's archaeological digs. Some opponents argue that the desire to produce high-profile findings for media attention has harmed the scientific rigor of archaeological research. They contend that the emphasis on dramatic discoveries may have come at the price of careful and meticulous investigation, thus undermining the academic worth of digs. Nonetheless, it is important to note that Hoas' tenure saw notable advances in archaeological discoveries and site protection. Some say that his leadership has helped to the preservation and investigation of several ancient monuments, allowing the world to learn about Egypt's rich past. On number two, we have allegations of political ties. Allegations of political links have been a problematic feature of Egyptologist Zahi Hawass's career. This controversy centers on views and claims that Hawass maintained close links with the Egyptian government and that these connections impacted his actions and choices as Egypt's antiquities director. 
Critics contend that Hawass's apparent political affiliations fostered a sense of prejudice and lack of objectivity in his capacity as Egypt's antiquities director. They claim that his tight relationship with government officials and politicians prompted concerns about whether his actions and choices were influenced largely by political considerations rather than strictly academic or cultural purposes. Furthermore, some argue that these purported political relationships may have impacted the allocation of resources and priorities within the discipline of Egyptology, perhaps favoring particular projects or persons at the cost of others. Concerns were expressed concerning the equal allocation of money and support for Egypt's archaeological research and cultural preservation activities. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, claim that his involvement with the government was important to campaign for the conservation and preservation of Egypt's cultural legacy. They claim that the government's participation was critical for obtaining resources, enforcing laws against illicit excavations and antiquities trafficking, and resolving larger site preservation and heritage management concerns. On number one, we have accusations of autocratic leadership. Accusations of authoritarian leadership have been a source of contention throughout Zahi Hawass' stint as Egypt's antiquities minister, sparking discussions and disputes concerning his management style and decision-making procedures. Critics contend that Hawass' leadership style was marked by a perceived lack of openness and inclusion. They claim he had complete authority over archaeological sites and information, often making unilateral choices without enough consultation or input from other academics and archaeologists. This gave the impression that he exerted autocratic power over Egyptology, restricting possibilities for other researchers and professionals to contribute to and participate in archaeological initiatives. Concerns were also expressed regarding the possibility of partiality and resource allocation. Critics said that Hawass' leadership may have resulted in the priority of certain projects or persons, perhaps at the expense of other significant components of Egypt's archaeological history. This generated concerns about the impartiality and fairness of resource allocation and research opportunities in the sector. Supporters of Hawass, on the other hand, claim that his leadership style was required to simplify decision-making procedures and speed measures in the face of different problems, such as unlawful excavations and site preservation. They argue that his firm position was critical to safeguarding Egypt's cultural legacy and preserving calm on the ground. Dr. Zahi Hawass was once the most famous archaeologist in the world. His passion for Egyptology and his larger-than-life personality made him a household name, and he was frequently seen on television documentaries about ancient Egypt. However, in 2011, everything came crashing down. What happened and what were those events that led to his downfall? Well, there are lots of more questions that need to be answered. So, buckle up and watch the video till the end, as the upcoming revelations will blow your mind. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Was Hawass simply a victim of Egyptian politics, or did he bring his downfall upon himself? The departure of Egypt's flamboyant head of antiquities, Zahi Hawass, followed by the naming of seven different successors to the joint posts he held, has left Egyptology leaders stunned. Hawass, with his dominant personality, was recognized internationally as the undisputed leader of Egypt's antiquities, although he was highly controversial. He headed the Supreme Council of Antiquities from 2002 and was also appointed Minister of Antiquities by Hosni Mubarak on 31 January 2011, just 11 days before the Egyptian president was toppled. Despite his links with the Mubarak regime, Hawass remained a minister in the military government until his resignation on the 5th of March last year. He stepped down for two reasons. He believed that the army had stopped guarding archaeological sites, and he had been accused of illegal activities, of which he was subsequently cleared. Allah al din Shaheen, an archaeologist at Cairo University, was named as Hawass's successor as minister, but his appointment was not confirmed. Then Hawass was reappointed on the 30th of March. On July 17th, Hawass left for a second time after he came under pressure from the transitional government. It proposed that Abdel Fattah al-Banna, a conservator, should succeed him, but the Secretariat of the Supreme Council opposed the appointment. This was followed by a five-month hiatus with no antiquities minister. The Supreme Council of Antiquities effectively took over the leadership, although this situation has not been formalized. 
The transitional government finally appointed Muhammad Ibrahim Ali, an Egyptologist at Aim Shams University, as Minister of Antiquities on the 7th of December. He remains in the post. Beneath the minister, the other key post is Secretary General of the Supreme Council. Hawass retained this position when he became minister in January 2011, but after his first resignation, it passed to a council official, Sabri Abdel Aziz. After returning as minister, Hawass named Mohammed Abdel Maksud, a museum specialist, as the head of the Supreme Council in early June. Hawass fell from power the following month. On August 18th, Mohammed Abdel Fattah, another museum specialist, was appointed as secretary general. He remained in post for just one month, until the 20th of September. Nine days later, he was replaced by Mustafa Amin, who still holds the position. There have also been changes at the country's leading museum. Tarak El Awadi replaced Wafa El Sadiq as the director of Egyptian Museum in central Cairo in January 2011, just a few days before the political turmoil that led to the looting of the museum on the 29th of January. 54 objects were stolen, only half of which so far have been recovered. El Awadi is now leaving, and his successor is yet to be named. Last month, Hawass said that it would not be fair for him to comment on his successors. He is busy publishing my excavation reports and lecturing, and is also finishing a book on antiquities and the 2011 revolution. Chris Naunton, the director of the London-based Egypt Exploration Society, says that European Egyptologists have maintained links with their colleagues, working via officials in Cairo. Instability in the Egyptian archaeological leadership is having a damaging impact, however, particularly as income from tourism has plummeted. Problems don't end here. Another controversial event that haunts Hawass to date is his assistance to Germans who came to do something unexpected. Zahi Hawass, the world's most recognized modern Egyptologist, has been called for interrogation over allegations that he assisted three German amateurs in stealing rock samples from within Egypt's tallest pyramid. Hawass dismisses the allegations, claiming that there is nothing against me. In April 2013, three Germans, two amateur archaeologists and a filmmaking companion went into the inner sanctuary of Giza's Great Pyramid, the last of the ancient world's seven marvels. The three, conspiracy theorists Dominique Gorlitz, Stefan Erdmann, and Peter Hofer, aimed to prove that the pyramid was not, as has been long assumed, the last burial place of Pharaoh Khufu, but rather a vestige of an even earlier civilization. In order to provide evidence of this, they removed a piece of the cartouche, which is the emblem that identifies for whom the pyramid was created, and transported it to Germany so that it could be examined there. The samples were returned after widespread indignation, and the men were also prosecuted in absent along with five Egyptian officials who were suspected of facilitating them in illegally entering the pyramid. The trial took place after widespread outcry. After a trial in which five officials alleged that Hawass, a controversial former antiquities minister, had assisted the theft of the samples while filming a documentary on the cartouche in 2010, all eight were found guilty on Tuesday. The trial was the culmination of the allegations made by the officials. Following the verdicts handed down on Tuesday, the court decided to question Hawass about his involvement in the case. Hawass claims that he left the government in the middle of 2011, which is two years before the crime was committed. He thus denies any role in the incident. He admits that, in his capacity as Minister of Antiquities, he gave his approval to the documentary that was released in 2010, but he asserts that no one touched the cartouches and no one even put their hands near them when it was being filmed. Hawass yelled aggressively over the phone, I was not an authority in 2013, saying that the year was 2013. In April of 2013, someone committed this theft. There is no allegation or accusation leveled against me. To be sure that what took place in 2010 was within the law, all I have to do is check with the district attorney. Regardless of the outcome of his interrogation, this is the latest setback in a once promising career that has ground to a halt ever since Hawass was forced out of his position as the Minister of Antiquities in Egypt following the uprising in 2011. Hawass's career has been in a holding pattern ever since. In the 2000s, the flamboyant Hawass gained a reputation as Egypt's version of Indiana Jones after participating in a number of films on Egyptology as well as hosting his own reality program. After being recognized as one of the world's 100 most important people by Time Magazine in 2006, he subsequently placed his name on a range of khaki trousers under his own brand name. 
Hawass was tainted by association after the deposition of the tyrant Hosni Mubarak, and while he remained in office for a few months after Mubarak's ouster, he eventually resigned under a cloud of unfounded corruption charges. In an interview that he gave to The Guardian the previous year, Hawass dropped hints about a future comeback and said that he was the only one qualified for the position. When asked about his leadership talents, Hawass described them as a gift from God. After some time had passed, he made the following observation. When I talk, people listen. When others speak, they sleep. I don't see why people are being so critical of me on this. I painted the idea of Egypt in the minds of people all over the globe. In the past, only people from other countries would do it. I went to England, and when I was there, a lady passed out in the elevator because she was so shocked to see me. It was hard for her to realize that I was going to be staying at her hotel. What actions should I take? This brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, click on the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video.